Welcome, everybody, to the 80th episode of The Jewish Drinking Show. I'm your host, Rabbi Drew Kaplan, and I'm very excited to welcome first-time guest, Yissi Steinhardt. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. Absolutely. Great so, pleasure and honor to be here. There we go. All righty. So for those less familiar with Yissi here, he has been mixing drinks for almost 17 years. He is available for bar. T- he does bartending, cocktail workshops, and bar consulting. I'm very curious about that. Um, and he also has an Instagram account which features him and is managed by his wife, uh, Bar yes. Simcha. Yes, Bar. She is the Simcha. only reason. She's the only reason why I have anything effective on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Bar Simcha, which sounds to me a lot like Bart Simpson. But uh, all right, so so Bar Simcha. So Gissy here is, uh, amongst many, many things, including what I mentioned in the, in the bio, he is yeah. the cocktail columnist for Machers Magazine. Some of you have, may have seen it. Some of you may have seen the, the cover page of the first two, ep- two issues now are out. Two right? issues, correct. Two, two issues. issues. The second issue just came out. Right. And by the time this publishes, maybe a third, ep- right. third issue, probably. So... Yes, I'm really curious about your contrib- your your cocktail column contributions to this magazine. So what have you done for this magazine as far as your cocktails column so far? What do you have coming out? And um, and also, what can you tell us about this magazine? <laughs> so <laughs> fair question. OK, so first of all, just just to start off with um, with Macher's Mag. So. Macher's Magazine was some, a magazine that came out a number of months ago, and there was, was a, it a lot of 2021. I believe so. Yes, yeah. yes. It comes out quarterly. Uh, currently, it's coming out quarterly. I know that the um, editor in chief. I was talking with him, and there there are hopefully going to be starting up uh, doing it more often. But right for the time being, they're starting off starting up quarterly, mm. and the idea is is that it's a Jewish men's lifestyle magazine and there was a lot of buzz about it on online <laughs> when it was you yep. know first coming out and you know trying to get the word out about it and <laughs> it's very funny because i was talking to to isaac he's the, the editor-in-chief and he was telling me how he's like listen you know oh pr is good pr i'm like okay <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of buzz like, yeah, there's, there's a lot, lot of, buzz. of buzz there was definitely a lot of yeah. buzz and people like do we really need this is this something that we really want and um Honestly, there definitely is a market for it. There are people in the Jewish community that enjoy finer things. And to have a magazine that is geared towards their lifestyle, mm-hmm. I mean, listen, to each their own and, and you know, let every, you know, live and let live. And, and, and if there are people that kind of are looking for this information and for, and we know what are the newest trends in, in uh, suits and watches and car leases and, and, and uh, companies and whatever it is and cigars go for it, you know, whiskey, uh, craft beer. I, I know you've spoken with Rabbi uh, Abram Pressburger right. and uh, he, he also is a contributor there and, you know, that's what it's all about sports. You know, I'm just like throwing out all the you know, right. Stuff. Well, so I first wanted to highlight for listeners of the Jewish Drinking Show. So cocktails are not the only alcoholic beverage mentioned. You mentioned no. Avram Pressburger, a previous guest of the show. He does craft beer. Um, I imagine whiskeys are in the magazine also. Yes, yes. There's right. the whiskey rabbi. I believe it's the whiskey rabbi. I'm not sure. Oh, bourbon rabbi, who's also oh, been a two-time the bourbon, two t- the bourbon no, no, rabbi. No, 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 the whiskey rabbi. Ooh. The whiskey rabbi. There's a bourbon rabbi. That's Rabbi Litvin. He's right. awesome. I met him the right. other week. Actually. Two-time guest. Two-time guest of the Jewish Drinking Show. Yeah, so he's he's amazing. I used to actually I used to work with his brother, um, oh. and uh, he actually dropped off a bottle by me of his of his of his uh, of his label his, of his label that's coming out. Bourbon rabbi bourbon. Mm-hmm. That stuff is chazak. <laughs> Get it? Chazak. <laughs> it's 115 proof. Oh, Gimachi that's right. That's right. Gimachi of chazak. Anyway, all right. It was, I thought it was funny. <laughs> so did he. He. Ma- I realized he mentioned on one of the episodes he appeared on about the cute little gematria. But okay. Right. So yeah. I well. So I'm looking at the. You know what? I'm just going to do for the those who are watching this on YouTube. You can see my screen share. So uh, cool. you go to the website and they. It's a Jewish men's lifestyle magazine. Uh, it's the it describes itself as the premier Jewish men's lifestyle experience from hobbies to collections. Get the ultimate guide and journey for the modern day Jewish gent. Uh, they have the Kiddush Club piece, I guess. All right. Uh, you can uh, if you are enthralled by men's luxury and higher end products, Mochers has it all covered for you. 
Um, our features and articles are advanced and knowledgeable and a luscious experience. And of course, the best part, anybody looking at this are some really gorgeous pictures of cocktails. And um, this is very relevant to our audience from bourbon to wine. Mochers, ma- machers. I always keep saying mochers, but machers mag covers all fine it, goods. It's spelled with an O. Okay. So, and, and you were telling me in the second issue, the editor described, you know, the, the reasoning behind that, right? That transliteration. Right. So it, it's the, the way the way as I put it is like it's it's branding it's 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 all about branding in the same way that Lyft has a Y and I'm trying to think of other well know, Tumblr companies. has no E right, right. Flickr exactly. also had no E yeah right so you have these different you know it, that's that's kind of the idea is that the spelling is part of the brand um, yeah that being said you know like it, yeah. when you're dealing with with transliterated words we always have this issue of spellings and pronunciations just you know not necessarily matching up so i think machers is usually an a but it, it's it's ni- it's an it's a clever uh spin on it to, to do it for that sort of atypical spelling like lift or flicker or tumblr or, or any of those so uh, wh- so as i know yissi was mentioning some but i'll just read off what it has right here on the website is they have a kiddish club macher of the month premium cigars fine wines scotch and bourbon kosher craft beer eats barbecue and grilling cars cologne man caves the hassan's watch suits and style and more and the more obviously includes cocktails <laughs> yeah i didn't i didn't make it on the list what can i tell you <laughs> but there's plenty plenty of drinking pieces and and apparently oh, columns sure. I, and i it's funny yeah. i only knew about the craft beer and i figured there was a whiskey i had no idea that there's there sounds like there's wine also uh, so all right but focusing so it and it primarily is targeted to not just any jewish man it sounds like it's more yeshivish orthodox so it's it's not necessarily a Shish Orthodox. It's more like um, I, I really it's 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 it kind of tries to go through all walks of life. So you have you have Yeshivish, you might have um, modern Orthodox, you might have YU, you might have uh, even like former Hasidim or current Hasidim. You know, like every really all walks of life. Like there are people in all but, but primarily Orthodox. Of, Either Orthodox or um, formerly Orthodox. Yeah, I mean, I, I I would say I would say it's geared towards Orthodox because okay. what they're looking for are kosher, kosher not kosher style, yeah. but you know, kosher products and you know, and and that kind of lifestyle. So it's not you know, it's it, they're not going to be featuring things in there that you know are aren't kosher or things there that you know are you know chil Shabbos or whatever it is like meaning mm-hmm. that's. Yeah. They're, they're okay. I mean, the, we can say Jewish it's more, it's at least at, le- at the very least a target demographic of an Orthodox yes. audience, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Cool. All right. So cocktails. So what, what cocktails have you in, at least in the, so far, the first two issues that have, have been published and uh, that you've put in the column and what you hope to be doing in the future. So what, what have you written about cocktails? Which cocktails have you written about also? Okay. Okay. So the, the the main idea of what it is that I'm looking to kind of bring out in this column is kind of bringing cocktails to the common man. Um, so the idea is is that it can be kind of overwhelming when you know you walk into a bar or you know like you see these specialty drinks with all of these fancy garnishes and bubbling and fire and exotic ingredients and all these other things and really. I, I, I would love just for everyone to understand that making yummy tasting drinks can happen at home mm. and you don't need all of these fancy things and you can still come out with a solid, delicious drink. Mm. Uh, so my first article was all about the lemon drop and the idea mm. that these are things that you probably could throw together with what you have in your refrigerator right now. Mm. Like you don't need anything special for this. If you have lemon, sugar, and vodka and a sink, you know, you can, you can make a delicious lemon drop. So that was the idea of my first article. Uh, my second article, which was all about the whiskey sour. Um, I kind of explained, um, sour mix, how to make sour mix, how I make sour mix, uh, mm. as well as kind of how, how, um, mix like pre-made mix companies really got started because of this, 
perception amongst people that no, no, this is something I can't do on my own. Mm. And the answer, I, I, as much as listen, for some people, yes, it, don't bother me with this headspace. I, if I fa- find a mix that I like that I can pull off the shelf or out of my fridge, and I'll use that and I'll get something that I like. Call it kavod. I, <laughs> I am always the first person to say, drink what you like. And mm-hmm. I always tell this to people when I'm doing my workshops or when I'm when I'm bartending. I don't care if you're six foot four, weigh 350 pounds, and have tattoos all over your arms. If you like the pink girly drink with the umbrella, order the pink girly drink with the umbrella. Mm-hmm. Dr- drink what you like. I, I I I'm a big fan of the it doesn't matter, drink what you like. And that, and I believe that goes not only for cocktails, it goes for beers, whiskey, whatever. Everything. It doesn't matter. And if you want to put ice, you know, in your whiskey, put ice in your, you know, so it's, 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 it's yeah, I, I'm not, I don't believe, yeah, I don't I'll subscribe. Tum- I don't subscribe. Right I don't subscribe to the belief that you have to drink, you know, against your will or it should be enjoyable. <laughs> Right. Um, That's what it's all about. That's what yeah. Bar Sumpa is all about. It's all about just, you know, loosening up and, and, and kind of getting your smile back. You know, there are times where just things are, you're, life is stressful, you know, life is stressful. Things can be rough. And especially this last year is, you know, year and a half has been insane mm-hmm. and people have been, you know, kind of really put to the test and pushed to their limits. So, you know, I think that uh, being able to have a healthy uh, you know, um, functional, uh, you know, outlet. I think that's very good. That mm-hmm. being said, I'm, that, I know, I, I know that a lot of times people are like, Oh, alcohol, you know, what are all these issues? I'm like, listen, I, I, I'm always, I always tell people you could also make delicious alcohol free cocktails, mocktails. Mm. There are so many different drinks that you can just, just take the booze out and have a delicious drink. Or, or even like maybe like add an ingredient or two also non-alcoholic in order to get, you know, similar flavors mm-hmm. there, there's really something in it for everybody and, and kind of history historically, I mean, cocktail started, you know, over 200 years ago, I'm like, yeah, yeah. Around 200 years ago was like when we know about like the first published cocktails, it was like the early 1800s. Mm-hmm. And so this is something that's really developed over time and it's exploded. There are so many different options out there. It's really exploded. So, really like, to remember, what, was it, what was it? Yeah. What the last 10, 15 years it's exploded. Oh man. Yes. Yes. And, and, and that's and in the, that's the, in the general, that's in sort of the general, you know, public in America. Have you on more of the ground scene in the Orthodox community? What have you seen, especially and you're in the greater New York city area, right? You're slightly upstate New York. And so what have you right, seen as right. far as uh, I get, oh, there's going to be a whole bunch of questions. The first is uh, what have you seen <laughs> sort of general interest, a uh, second uh, consumption. And then third, uh, it sounds more where you're going, which is also people actually doing it themselves at home. Um, that was a lot of questions, but what, what have you seen? Right. Okay. Right, so let me <laughs> try to break this down. Yeah. So first of all, with regard to interest, Mm-hmm. There is a huge amount of interest. Mm-hmm. So people, it, and, and I've, 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 I'm bartending at um, different events. So people will come up and they'll, they'll want a specific drink. They've had it. They know they like it. They want to see what can you do with that drink. How do you make that drink? Oh wow! Um, and and really, what it boils down to is the variations in the. Um, in the ratios of the ingredients, mm-hmm. or you might have a situation where a specific bartender or mixologist will tweak an ingredient or add something or use a different version of an ingredient in order to kind of make it their own. Um, so that you have that. And then you have people who are like, no, no, I, give me, give me something. I, I want to try something new. What do you have that I've never had before? Mm. You know, and, and that's always fun and cool because these are people who just like, they're looking to explore. They want to know, they want to try new things and see where, where a drink can take them. And that's, you know, that's always fun. Uh, and then you have uh, other people who are just like, I just like, like stay away from me. So <laughs> with regard to, with regard to interest, there was a huge, huge amount of interest. And I have to tell you, I'm not the only person who's doing this. There are, like, there are a number of companies that have opened up and people have started doing this 
for you know either as a as a as a main main job or side gig, uh, people working for uh, catering companies and event planners and party planners mm. you know, who are doing mixology and doing bartending and different things like that. So there is a huge amount of of interest, and this is kind of it's something that that like it's like almost becoming expected. Like, oh, what do you mean? Who's no, you know, no longer we've, we're out of we've grown out of the days of kind of like the drinks table where you kind of just have here's the soda, here's the schnapps, you know, and like a stack of cups <laughs> and, 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 and shot glasses. Like what, what's someone doing with that? What are they you know, what, what's who's, who's mixing something with it? <laughs> yeah. Hello, dear listeners. It's your host, Rabbi Drew. I wanted to break in right now and just say, hey. A, thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate or watching however you're consuming this content. And I'm always open for new ideas, both for specifically the Jewish Drinking Show, whether it's topics, whether it's guests. I'm also looking for other resources that I can provide you with in the Jewish Drinking Project more broadly. Also, you know, I'd really like to offer you the opportunity to, to sponsor this work. Whether If you want to go to patreon.com slash Jewish Drinking, I would greatly appreciate it. And uh, if you have ideas for swag, also, please feel free to send them to me at drew at jewishdrinking.com. All right. Thank you so much, Lachaim, And now back into the episode. So the first part of this is geographical. So you're in slightly upstate New York. You're in Muncie. How how have mm -hmm. you seen different things? I imagine you're in the greater New York area, right? New York City area that you'll do events at, right? Sure. So um, I've I've New York, New Jersey, tri-state area, but honestly, I did a Zoom for Connecticut. I did a Zoom workshop for some for mm -hmm. some shul, uh, shul in Connecticut and, and some families in Connecticut, but I haven't yet gotten hired to go out to Connecticut. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so I, what I'm one, I'm, day, one day I hope. Right. Part of my curiosity is: Have you seen? And it doesn't have to break down geographically. There could be other demographic differences in in sort of the people that you've met, what they're interested in drinks wise, or even knowledge wise or interest wise. Um, because I imagine that if I had to guess, and this could be a difference, by the way, you said in, in the bio it was 17 years, you've been mixing drinks. It sounds like I would imagine that what you mix drinks for 15 to 17 years ago is vastly different even than five to seven years ago, let alone now. So what differences have you seen in that time? So, I mean, I could also tell you from one of my, my personal experiences is that everything right now, there's a very, very big focus on fresh, a very, very mm -hmm. big focus on real. So as I was saying, like as much as sure, yes, there are people who like, I, I enjoy this Mr. and Mrs. T's or this master of mixes or this roses, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, but now the real like the focus now is, is like you know either how do i make this myself at home what are the freshest ingredients i can use to get the best tasting or the realest tasting drink anytime i travel i, I always try to go somewhere and taste a drink or two from that place and just see mm. like what people are making over there mm. and and it's always interesting to me because a lot of this boils down to the kosher organizations that restaurants and and kosher establishments have to follow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, like, for example, in New York, I'm throwing this out there, and I might get a lot of hate mail for this, but in <laughs> New York, the mainstream Jewish Orthodox kashrus organizations in restaurants, uh, unless you're under the OU, I guess, are very, very, very strict. And really? the way they kind of look at it is, when in doubt, just say no. Mm. Um, I've so I was talking about bar consulting. So I've worked for uh, a number of restaurants, and I've I've had some run-ins with mashkichim who were just like, "Well, no, you can't use this." And I show them the product. I'm like, well, "But look, the, the hashgacha is right there." Even uh, with the hashgacha no. on it. So I, with a, with a hashgacha on the product, no. So I I once asked, "Why? What's the issue?" And the response is, "Someone might say something." Someone might look at it and, eh. okay. So, you know, depending on where you are geographically <laughs> in the country uh -huh. and um, I, maybe I'm, I'm starting like a political fire here, I apologize. <laughs> but I, I know, I, I just, I, that kind of thing just really like irks me. Like if, if something is kosher, then it's kosher. If it isn't kosher, then it isn't. I understand that there are different levels and different preferences and humras and things like 100%. 
But if the answer as to why you're saying no is because someone might say something about me or about my conscious agency or whatever it is, like that's, that's I could not true. I could see with maybe they don't like they don't agree with the particular either in general the hashgacha that particular certifying agency or maybe that particular certifying agency's policy on X Y or Z product or the, the you know the processes involved but. Right. Wow, yeah. that's pretty yeah, wild. Listen, I, I thought you were yeah. going to say like, oh, it was like a, I don't know, something without a hashgacha, or even like a, a, right. a fruit or, or vegetable product, but right. it was just it had a hashgacha already. What issues have you seen? Like, what when have they not allowed you stuff that was fine? Uh, two specific examples. <laughs> yeah, um, I had an issue where a mashgach would not let me use Coco Lopez. Uh, the cream of coconut. I wanted to make um, pina coladas and they yeah. would not let me use that product. Um, and also and, mint. And and that's um, certified. Mint leaves. Wait, wait, wait. Coco Lopez, yes, yes, yes. Coco Lopez is, 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 has a hashkacha on it. Yeah. It's very prominently on it. An OU. Uh, not good enough. Oh, you parv. Know, yeah, it's not even parv, like a dairy right? thing where you could say, you know, it's right. not halvi. It's, it's just, no, it's OU. No. Mm. OU, right there. That's right bonkers. There. Nope, not good enough. Wow. Yeah. So, and uh, then you were, and you mint, were... mint also. Mint. Yeah. What were you saying? Yeah, mint. Mint. Mint leaves. What's wrong mint with mint? So I told him, okay, like, I'll wash them. Like, of course, I'm going to wash them. Like, I want to make sure that, like, that I'm not going to see any. It's like, no, no, you can't use mint leaves. <laughs> so, uh, in one restaurant, I could not use mint leaves at all. Uh, even if they were checked by the mashkiach, which I thought was insane, but we, listen, why not? Um, <laughs> why not? And in another restaurant, even I checked, I, I even checked know. by the mashkiach, even checked, even checked by the mashkiach. And another in another restaurant that I worked at, um, we were allowed to use mint, but only if it was checked by the mashkiach. The mashkiach had to go through the mint. It wasn't just like <laughs> wash it. Um, and I was like trying to explain how like small bugs don't like mint. Uh, mm-hmm. You might have an ant issue, but again, you wash those off. They're not going to stick to the leaves. Um, wow. Anyway, yeah. So wow. one restaurant, as long as it was checked in the Meshkiah, would allow me to use mint. Another restaurant that I worked for, it didn't matter uh, whether or not it was checked. didn't matter. You could mint not use not mint allowed. leaves. Mint not allowed. Mint was not allowed. Yeah. Yep. Wow. <laughs> anyway. Wow. <laughs> That's atrocious. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, it is. So when you, especially when the focus is on fresh, when the focus now is on real, and then I'm not allowed to use real. I'm not allowed to use fresh. It's like extremely frustrating. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah. So that's that's kind of that's kind of where where so, things so are th- at now. So that's in restaurants, and yeah, and it sounds like for for uh, people themselves at home, especially like the column that you're writing for Machers is encouraging people to use their, their own ingredients, stuff they can find easily yes. in their own kitchens. They already have a home. They don't have to find some obscure ingredient somewhere. It's stuff right. easily, easily locatable. What about accessible access? Yes. Accessible. And what about for events or other such uh, things that you might do or bartending? How um, is that a, do you run into similar situations uh, as far as certain so, ingredients? So yes and no. So the answer is yes and no. Um, meaning, I'll put it like this. I, I, I will follow the lead of the person hiring me. Mm-hmm. So what that means is, is that I, I tell everyone, I'm going to follow... I'm going to follow... Uh, this, I follow the CRC guidelines. The CRC app, I'm sure everyone... You, you know I'm talking about the CRC app. You know, so I don't know the app, but uh, I know the CRC. Ingredients. You've, yeah, you've got Rabbi. Right. Um, they have a they have a pretty comprehensive list. They've got a pretty comprehensive list of of uh, bar ingredients and things like that, mm-hmm. and uh, whiskey. I, I think and Rabbi vodka. Akiva Niehaus is also. I think Rabbi Akiva Niehaus right. is he's heavily involved with that. Yes, yeah. but what, what I what I what I really do appreciate about what they do as a cash resource organization is that they give guidelines. Mm-hmm. They don't necessarily say, okay, they, we might not, we're not going to be able to follow and track every single product. Mm. But if you find, if you find, let's say, let's say you find vodka 
and it's unflavored vodka. And it's not just unflavored vodka. It, it clearly states what, you know, what it's, what it's made out of. It's, it's, it's grain, uh, it's grain alcohol. It's not owned by a drunk to worry about how much of Pesach. Like it gives you guidelines. If you're finding something like this, you're, you're okay. Could it be that there's an issue? Yes, in anything there could be an issue. You, mm. you never know. Maybe someone, maybe someone threw lard in my coffee. You know, who knows? Mm. But the point is, like, they give you guidelines of look. This, these are the general rules of how you're going to be able to find a kosher product that you're mm. looking for. You know, so so I always tell people, look, I follow the the, the CRC guidelines. Um, anything that I'm using, any any fresh, anything I'm using, I wash everything. You know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not taking my mint under a microscope and looking for, you know, I don't, I don't know, I'm trying to think of what microscopic bugs they look for. But anyway, the point is like, I'm, you know, yeah. I, I don't, I don't go that far. You're right. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, yes, I, I, I make sure that anything that I'm using, any leafy, anything, whether I'm using mint or if I'm using basil, you know, I'm making sure everything is washed and clean 100%. But, you know, I'm, I'm not a trained mashkiach. I'm a Jewish person who was, making sure that I'm not serving anyone trafe, you know? So, so I, I let everyone know this, on, you know, at, at the get go, some people are like, well, you know, not good enough. Okay. Mm -hmm. And for some people like, you know, great. I, to have someone who's, who I know is Shomer Shabbos, Shomer Kashras, who's behind the bar, you know, they're not, you know, going to, to be looking to, to mess me up or, or, or they're to make sure that they're getting products that are, you know, mm -hmm. that are at least, under the guidelines of, of a conscious organization, that they're okay with that. Um, that being said, there are also times where the products that I'm using, you know, even sometimes where the alcohol that I'm using has has hechsher in mind. It exists. You can get just about any any alcohol base or, or alcohol product, you know, with hmm. with a hashgach on it. Not everyone does, you know. Hmm. But again, you know, some yes, some no. Some people also like saying like, oh, I'm going to get my own. I'm going to get my own uh, this, that, or the other thing. I want you to use my ingredients. You're going to come and bartend and use my ingredients. So then it's kind of shifts a little bit. Like I want to make sure that what mm. they're asking me to use is going to be something I'm comfortable putting into my Kalim. Yeah. <laughs> you know, which, which, which can happen. Um, yeah. So far, thank God, you know, I, I haven't had any issues of like someone saying like, here, I want you to use this, you know, non-kosher whatever. Um, mm. but, but it really is important to know that, that there are certain ingredients that you can't just pull one off the shelf. Like, right. and one that constantly comes up is vermouth, you know, especially when I make any martinis you, in America, it's, it's, it's rough right now, basically, um, unless you're get, importing something from Europe or, or Israel, the only American option that you have for kosher vermouth, it's wine, it's wine based is, is Kedem. Yeah. That's, that's the only one you got. That's it. Sweet yes. and dry. Well, I, that's fine. It's just not good. <laughs> right. Yes. 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 Sorry for anybody from yeah. Royal Wine listening to this. I, Royal Wine makes a lot of great wines. Oh, no. Kedem is yes, yes, is they do. Uh, woefully, yes, they do. terribly sad of a vermouth. Yes. But yeah. I love your other uh, products, Royal listen. Wine people. Yeah. <laughs> Well, while well, we're on the subject, um, I, I, you know so, what? I'm telling you like I'm it trying, is. I'm and and, like and who knows? Maybe one here. day, who knows? Maybe one day Royal Wine Kedem gets their act together. They improve the vermouth and that would be amazing. I'm not here to bash Royal yeah. Wine or their Kedem products. No, I like a lot no, of even the Kedem all. wines. I'm a weird fan. I like a lot of the Kedem wines, um, but the vermouth is is woefully, tragically sad. Hey there, I hope you've been enjoying this episode featuring Yissi Steinhardt on cocktails. If you like cocktails, you should definitely come back for next week's episode. That's right, episode number 81, and that will feature David Statman, who has created and runs the Kosher Cocktails Enthusiasts Facebook group. Here's a sneak peek. In terms of trends, one thing that's picked up, a lot of people are making their own vermouth. Mm. Um, and, you know, there are online, there are a number, there's, I'm sure you could find lots of different recipes for, you know, homemade vermouth of different stripes. And, um, and so people are making their own and tinkering with that. I hope you enjoyed that sneak peek into next week's episode featuring David Statman. I hope you continue enjoying this episode with Yassi Steinhardt. And you have a, a really cool Instagram account, which I'm actually, for those who, who catch this on 
Inst- uh, I'm sorry, YouTube. Uh, you can catch YouTube. his answer. You can see it on screen here. It is bar dot simcha. Oh, nice. Not to be confused with Bart Simpson, but bar dot simcha <laughs> is. <laughs> Uh, and as you can see, he right. does a small event, uh, bartending, cocktail workshops, consulting, recipe development, uh, based out of Muncie, New York. And here's a bunch of his pictures of him in action, his cocktail creations, and uh, it looks really delicious. And we have, so uh, I'm curious. So I know uh, before the show, we were talking a little bit about connecting with a Co- craft cocktail co- kosher co- cocktail crafter community on instagram uh so how is this you know in connecting with fellow uh cocktail crafters co- kosher cocktail crafters how's this uh community been for you we actually have um there are qu- there's a plethora of uh, of of whatsapp groups right now um with 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 uh, professionals and 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 lay people and you know people who are interested in this kind of this kind of stuff like mm-hmm. there's uh, I am on a a group of, for craft beer uh, I am on a group with uh, other other mixologists so uh, the mixologist group like we're we're talking about you know uh, how do you deal with certain things you know bartending uh, issues that come up. Um, how do you deal with you know large gatherings uh, when there's a run at the bar? Um, what do you use? What products do you use? Like when you're making certain types of drinks, what do you prefer to use? You know things like that. Mm-hmm. So we really kind of get to talk and and kind of you know throw ideas around of like things that we're doing. Um, and what's really cool is that because it's it's web based, WhatsApp is web based, so. We have groups that have people from all over the world. We have people in Israel, people in France, people in Canada and America. And, you know, we're all kind of throwing around our ideas. And that's kind of like where I'm getting to see like all these things that are available outside of the U.S. Oh, 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 so, okay. So if if I'm in Israel, I have access to other things. Oh, and Culture London does and Kale, you know, they, 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 they certify certain products in in uh, the UK mm-hmm. and those products never make it to America. So mm-hmm. like, Oh, whatever makes it to the America to America is, is not produced in the same place. So it doesn't carry the same hatcher or they're using, you know, so like kind of we get to, you know, talk a, a, about, you know, all these different things. And what's also really cool is that so like, Oh, you're heading there. So, okay, you got to bring me back a few bottles of this <laughs> and that. Like, and then we have ingredients that we didn't have access to before mm-hmm. and we can, you know, be working with it and kind of throwing out ideas and and it's just it's it's a lot of fun and and there's also there's a huge feeling of camaraderie as much as we're technically yeah we're, we're competition yes but you know what we we also all of us understand that our parnasa is the, we're going to get what we're supposed to get and if we're not supposed to get it we're not going to get it you know so, if I could yeah. If I could add on to that, it's also, I, I think by working together and elevating everybody's game, elevating, it also uh, elevates the, the, cra- the kosher craft cocktail experience for people at these events. And if they come away with negative experiences or subpar cocktails, they might not have to, because you mentioned earlier in the episode, people coming to you, surprise me, make me something new. And if you come with lackluster cocktails and it affects everybody because they're, you know, it's not like you're going to have different crowds. You're, you're going to, you know, kosher people get around. And so at different events, no, it's true. It's simple as, you know, weddings. And, and so by people stepping up their game, I think it helps everybody because it also, oh, sure. it also encourages kosher consumers in their appreciation of cocktails. And it, and ultimately goes back to what we were talking about, helping people enjoy what they, what they like, right. you know? And, right. So that's important. That's, that's 100% important. And, and that's one of the things that I, I always try to do when it comes to like my, my, my workshops. So mm-hmm. aside from, I, so I do in-person workshops. Um, so, you know, I can go with, go somewhere and, and I bring everything with me, all the alcohol, all the, all the tools, um, all the mixers and, and, and all the, you know, modifiers, everything. I bring everything with me. And then I, I teach people and we go through three drinks. Uh, it usually takes about an hour. And do you, and do, you, yeah. do you only show yours or does everybody have their equipped? No, no, no. everyone, when I do in-person, yeah. in-person yeah. workshops, I, I, I hook up everybody with everything they're going to need. So that mm-hmm. way they physically do it 
while I'm, I'm showing them what to do. And that way, it, it also a kind of like, oh, okay, like there's like muscle memory involved. Like, okay, I've done this. So when, when yeah. you do that, by the way, do they get to keep this stuff? Or is it just for the workshop itself? No, so okay, so it's just for the workshop itself. Okay. If they if they want to, meaning I have different pricing based on what it is that they want. If they want to keep everything, all the tools and everything at the end, that's also doable. Just okay. cost more because then they're keeping everything. Yeah. Um, so I've got that, but also I do on Zoom, and that you know kind of took off during during COVID, mm-hmm. and has really kind of broadened what I can do. Like I was working with one family again internationally. We have some family in Israel, we have some family in Canada, somewhere in America, different sides of Canada. And okay, let's figure out a time that will kind of be, you know, just as uncomfortable for everybody as everybody else. <laughs> you know, and, and, and we and we were able to do a, a Zoom workshop with a family that barely has a chance to see each other. Hmm. And they were all kind of getting to they were all getting together. Awesome. They were able to get together and I showed them I showed them three drinks and we went through everything and and there was like, wow, like this was, there's so much that you can do with just a few ingredients and things that you have at home. And also like I'll help people source, like someone from Canada, it's actually, this was in Toronto and someone uh, I was doing a workshop for and they couldn't find one of the ingredients. They weren't sure what to get. So I was like, well, you, you don't need to necessarily get um, this brand. You can get other brands. Like, well, where do I find that? I'm like, hang on. I Google search. I'm like, send me your address. They send me their address. <laughs> I Google searched in Toronto liquor stores in Toronto. And I found a liquor store less than two miles away from where they live. Hmm. And I called them up and I'm like, hi, do you carry this brand of triple set? And they said, yes. I'm like, excellent. I call them back up. I'm like, but, you know, two miles away, that liquor store, they've got what you need. They're expecting you. Nice. That's awesome. You know? and, and it was just, it was just a really simple way. Like, Oh, Hey, like these things are accessible to me and I can get them. Mm-hmm. And you know, that's really what I want to do is I, I want to just share that there's, there's something, there's something in it for everybody up to and including non-alcoholic and that, and that it's, it's really so much easier than, than people necessarily, you know, are thinking about it and that it's something that they can really enjoy and they can share that joy with other people. It's all about just, sharing joy. I'm to that. Yesy, thank you so much for sharing all this. This is really fascinating to hear about uh, what's going on in the cocktail scene. And uh, so thank you. Is there anything else you want to share with us? Thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you. Thank you for having me on. This is a lot of fun. Um, definitely have to make sure that I uh, shout out to my amazing wife who kind of takes care of all my uh, Instagram and, and social media because Honestly, I have no idea how any of this stuff works, but she's awesome and amazing, and she makes me look really, really good. There you so go. thank you to my wife. Um, and yeah, uh, follow. Uh, I would say subscribe. Uh, subscribe to your channel and and uh, follow follow you and follow me uh, at bar And um, my email address is at home bartending at gmail dot com. Um, and and I and I mean this when I say this. If someone has questions reach out. I'm, I'm happy to answer questions. It's something that I genuinely enjoy uh, talking about and getting involved in. And if I, I might not have the answer, but I might know someone who does. So I always <laughs> tell people, even if it doesn't work out, someone gets in touch with me and they're like, they want to ask me about, you know, they want to do an event, they want to do bar thing, whatever it is, or the price isn't right, whatever it is. I always say to them, listen, no problem. Be in touch. If you have any questions, I'm happy to help. Cool. All right. Very neat. All right. Well, y'all see, yes, see, thank you so much. And L'chaim. L'chaim. Have a wonderful night. All right. Thank you.